Hello, this is Dan Curry with the Deeds of God video series called the Six Day Series, where we look at how different, how many different ways there are that the human body seems to be made in reflection of holy things spoken of in the Bible. Today's discussion is about <clears throat> the thyroid cartilage, which we call the Adam's apple. It's one of the most amazing things, actually, in this series. Here's a picture of a person's collarbones and their sternum. And just above that is their trachea on its way down to their lungs. It'll branch off and go to each lung. But attached to the trachea, attached to the bottom of the thyroid cartilage structure, is the thyroid gland. And it kind of looks like a beard. I mean, I say that because the rest of this kind of looks like a head. These are two cricothyroid muscles. They're called that because there's a kind of a wedding ring shaped cartilage. It's like a ring and it's stationary right here. And this is your thyroid cartilage itself, your Adam's apple, and it moves up and down. These muscles help move it up and down. They bridge between the thyroid cartilage and the cricoid cartilage, so they're called cricothyroid muscles. And they are essentially red muscles against white cartilage once you get down to those tissue depths, if you were able to cleanly remove all the other tissue off of them. So you end up with the thyroid cartilage, which kind of looks multi-layered. You have a layer of cartilage, and then you have some membrane tissue between that and the hyoid bone. And these are like the horns of the hyoid bone they're called, you know, the horns, I don't know. They labeled it that. And this part that sticks up right there is the epiglottis. The epiglottis um, helps you swallow by covering your air passageway when the food goes by. It folds forward, but otherwise it stands up tall behind the front of the uh, hyoid bone. You can see it back behind just the tip of it sticking over kind of like a leaf made of cartilage. So that's what the structure looks like. And as I've been explaining, it kind of looks like a description of Christ in the book of Revelation, Jesus Christ. John the Apostle was taken to heaven and received a vision, and this is what he said in Revelation 19.11. Then I saw heaven opened, and there was a white horse. Its rider was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a fiery flame, and on his head were many crowns. Well, I don't know if you would say this is many crowns, but it's definitely multiple crowns, if it was to be a crown at all. And fiery eyes, well, these are red muscles against white cartilage. Um, is it Jesus Christ? Well, he was a Hebrew man, and, you know, he's a high priest also, and both would have worn a beard. And he's riding out in victory to make war on the enemies of God. Well, the collarbones going off to the shoulders almost look like raised arms. And here in this picture I've just sort of depicted a man that's matching the general description of the vision. So in this particular case, if we were speaking the New Testament, we would actually be speaking it from our voice box, from our uh, you know vocal cords which are housed inside this structure. And so we're actually speaking the words of the New Covenant with something, a structure that looks like the author of the New Covenant, Jesus Christ. And you know, uh, we're actually, he was the dwelling place of God among men at the time of the New Covenant, and it's pictured in our body, on the front of our neck, underneath our skin and fat and everything. And if you go and look at images of the thyroid cartilage, and there are a lot of them, many of them look quite a lot like that, you'll see that it's, you know, pretty faithful and accurate way to draw it. Okay, so that's the front. But what if you were going to go around to the back side of that same structure? Now you're on the back side of the thyroid cartilage. And what you have there are the epiglottis. That's the leaf-like structure that will fold over when you swallow your food and cover the air hole. And this is, you know, the same structure that you saw before. Well, this is the back side of it curving around the leaf-like structure. And, uh, you know, it has the membrane. It has the hyoid bone and the horns. And these two structures here, your vocal cords stretch between them. It's called your arytenoid cartilages. And uh, I didn't draw in the vocal cords, but you know they stretch between them. So when we speak, our voice is emanating from these two leaning structures. And this, it looks a little like a cloud or a leaf. And this, it looks almost like maybe a curtain. Well, that's odd because in the Old Covenant, the dwelling place of God among men when Moses and his people followed God for 40 years in the desert was a cloud. In the daytime God would be a cloud that led them and at night if he chose to lead them 
he would be a fiery pillar. And when he stopped, they set up camp. And when they set up camp, they set up the tabernacle, which was their portable church. And once they had set it up, there was a room that was very holy in it, and they would take the Ark of the Covenant into that room and put it there. This is just the top of the Ark of the Covenant. Um, it had two figures that were carved onto it and covered with gold. All I know about them is that they were to lean forward towards each other, looking down and touching their wings. I don't know if they touched two wings or one set of wings. In other descriptions of the throne room of God, there are winged creatures that cover themselves with the wings they don't need to use. I don't know if they were supposed to cover themselves and just touch one wing or two wings, but I drew it this way for this example and it would work either way because what I'm showing you is that the dwelling place of God in Moses' day, the days of the Old Covenant, was a cloud and once they would set up all this tent and place the Ark of the Covenant there, it says in, um, <clears throat> it says in chapter 25 of Exodus that God would come into the tabernacle, take his place between the cherubim and dwell there. You know, he would stay there and rest. And on the top of the lid was a depression, like a little low spot. It was called the mercy seat. It was important because there was a, a ceremony or a rite they did where once a year they would go in and drill a little goat's blood and bull's blood there to atone for the sins of the people of Israel for that year. They couldn't do it for all time like Christ did, but every year they would go slaughter more and more bloodshed had to be shed. But it did cover for the sins of Israel that year. So there you have it, a cloud. Well, you know, the structure we speak about the Old Testament with has sort of a cloud. A flat, a flat surface with a dish, well, you know, the passageway for air and foods is through here. There's a dish out there between these two leaning structures. And speaking of leaning structures, two leaning figures, and um, something that looks like a curtain. Well, in the tabernacle there was a real curtain. But of course, the back side of the thyroid cartilage kind of looks like a curtain. I think that given the importance of the Word of God, it is very, very telling and interesting that the Christian and Jewish understanding of God is portrayed in this structure, which is in the neck of every human being on earth, no matter what their religion, and it bears such a close item by item correspondence with Judaic things and Christian things. I believe it's a possible additional proof that Jesus Christ is who he, who he said he was. Then there's so many things that are that, you know, as a Christian, I really can't, I can hardly imagine not believing in Jesus Christ. I think the evidence is so heavy. But built into man from the beginning of time, did evolution do this? I'm Dan Curry. This is a six-day series video. Thank you for listening.